Welcome to Making Conversations, a podcast from makers Gemma Brown and Robin Galway. Today's episode is from the Ulster University 2019 degree show. Do you want to go? Oh, okay. Um, hello, everyone. This is Gemma and Robin, and we are the hosts of Making Conversations podcast, which is Gemma's love child, little brain child. Oh, give me too much credit, honestly. I've got so much time on my hands. So <laughs> we're a bit echoey. We're kind of we're um, on tour today. We are yes. at the Ulster University, and we are here to see the 2019 degree show. Yeah. And yeah, no, we're going to have a quick look around and hopefully try and grab some willing uh, participants to make some quick conversations uh, with the fresh graduates to just see. Yeah, we're going to just we're going to ask a few questions. They might not answer. Who knows what's going to happen in this episode? It's really exciting. But this is literally a little kind of taster episode that we are throwing out there. We are hoping to launch our season, our series uh, in August for August Craft Month. So definitely stay tuned. Um, hopefully you'll like what you hear. And is there anything you want to say, Robin? I've probably uh, taken control over this. What, when, why? No, I think we've got it all. Yeah, yeah okay. It's all we've good. ticked everything off our list. Let's just jump right into some conversations. If you could just introduce yourself and your work. Yes. Hi, I'm Rosie Elwood and I've been making jewellery, um, mostly exploring the utility and beauty of women. Fantastic. Okay. And can you tell us a wee bit about your um, degree show and mm-hmm. your final year and your work? Yes. Um, so I have taken perhaps different traditional assumptions about the jewellery that women wear, the tools that women have used um, in the home, so such as pearl jewellery, um, embroidery hoops, thimbles, and I have kind of unpicked them and put them back together again to create uh, new drawings and little essay pieces that um, bring a new light to womanhood. Fantastic. And um, visually, how would you describe your work? Very delicate, uh, romantic, um, and with a big involvement of um, thread, silver, wood, and text. Fantastic. And are they meant to be functional? Is it exhibition work? Is it um, conceptual pieces mm-hmm. more so? Um, a lot of the work I have out at the exhibition would be conceptual pieces. Um, lots of the silver drawing translates really nicely into more traditional forms of jewellery. Um, I enjoy mixed media conceptual work. Fantastic. The work looks absolutely beautiful. Um, So what, um, you were saying a lot about womanhood Mm -hmm. and how it's very much inspired Mm -hmm. your work, Um, but how did you come to this sort of line of thinking Mm -hmm. and um, is there any visual um, inspiration Mm -hmm. or anybody who that inspires Mm -hmm. the work that you do make? Yes, um, so my initial spark of inspiration actually came from the Museum of Gothenburg. I was there visiting a friend um, and in one department they have some of the digs from Viking graves and there was uh, remnants of keys there that they had dug up, that these keys were found in graves of women um, in different areas of Sweden and that they had deduced that these keys would have been worn by the woman and it was a representation of her how powerful her household was oh, so depending on um, how ornate the key was, how precious the key was would communicate um, how wealthy, how powerful her homestead was to the surrounding um, community. So that was the initial spark of what is it, what do we have that women wear, that women use, um, that communicates to other people about who they are and um, what they stand for. Brilliant. And can you tell us a wee bit about um, the making processes that you use? You've got quite a a range of um, techniques. So do you have any preferences, how Mm -hmm. you did things, um, what was your favourite that you kind of made? Yes. Um, I love to draw with pen and ink. That tends to be where I start. So whether it's I'm drawing something that I see or I might be listening to, I listen to a great radio show about the history of women using embroidery and that to to draw as I was listening helped bring about, it brings about visual images that I then translate into other materials such as metal. So I might start with a little bit of silver wire, which um, often round, rounded silver wire and then I love the rolling mill so I'd often use the rolling mill and it's all kind of play and experimental of what happens if I twist the metal this way or if I flatten it this much 
on one end and keep the other end in the original state um, that it started. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, so how did you find your actual degree show? Was it mm -hmm. everything you kind of worked up to? Mm -hmm. Was it as you expected it? Mm -hmm. I definitely feel like I have learned a lot. It's a great initial experience of how to put together an exhibition. Um, I was very grateful for all the help that I had in the process of getting to this point, which you can come around and see. Um, Yes, it was lots of experience. I've enjoyed my final year a lot. The kind of freedom of the conceptual work is definitely very inspiring for me. So I think I've enjoyed every year more um, as I've progressed. And has it been, um, has womanhood been a consistent theme sort of throughout your degree? Or have you kind of dabbled in a few different things? Do you feel like this is a good summary of your experience? Um, who you are as yeah, an artist? Yeah, I feel like it's a good summary. I think that probably that's a good way to describe it. I've got... A, <laughs> um, I've got... Uh, I suppose work that I've done previously that belongs more in the traditional jewellery but you can see elements of the play with line and, and pearl in yeah. that and then I've also got a uh, drawing that's a bit more focused on kind of exploring this idea of woman and um, yeah so I think it's a good I feel like I've gotten to a really good starting point Brilliant. after my degree. Yeah, it feels like a good stepping stone. That's always mm -hmm. good. And so I suppose the next question, last question, mm -hmm. um, what is in your future? What are you hoping to do? What is already lined up? Yeah, um, I have got a couple of commissions that I'm working on Amazing. currently. And then I'm going to do a little bit of training with a Dutch jeweler named Ruth Peters in the summer. Um, just, he have, runs a summer school and it's all about exploring the soul and oh um, making work that is true to what you find yeah. um, so I've got a bit of prep to do for that and then I hope to set up a studio or carry on making commissions I want to be an artist so this isn't the end of my journey Good. at uni. And whereabouts are you based as well? Um, that's still up for debate so okay. possibly here my family's just relocated to the north northeast of England so possibly there um, depending, I haven't decided yet. I haven't lost no. you just yet. No, no. Excellent. And then yeah. um, social media, how can people find you? What's your website and your handle yep. and all that yep. stuff? Um, so my website is www.rosielwoodjewelry.co.uk um, and then my Instagram is at rosielwoodjewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, my email address is rosielwoodjewelry at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And do you have any advice for um, any other people who are either going through the degree mm -hmm. or um, any sort of things you would like to aspire to mm -hmm. in the future? Um, I always think perseverance is very important. Um, so I think there are times when it feels very painful to be creative or it doesn't go to plan or there are times when it's very exciting and then times when it's a bit more slow. And I think actually there is... I wouldn't be at this point without uh, the last three years and that's really important to acknowledge um, and just have fun I've had a lot of fun this year and yeah. I think it is important that there's a good bit of play and experimentation okay. good well it's an absolutely beautiful um, exhibition thank you um, and congratulations thank you it's, thanks. Uh, it just it looks absolutely beautiful so thank you so much for chatting with us thank you and good luck in the future thank you so hello, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I'm Lisa Allen. Hello. Um, so the, you are at the degree show that you're a ceramics uh, yes. project? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and so this is your work, could you describe it uh, for us? Um, yes, um, it is um, an analysis of um, ceramic material culture, um, specifically the um, porcelain figurine, the china figurine. Um, so it's really about um, taking the china figurine through a process of transformation and rebirth um, and changing it from something that is rejected and unwanted into something that is possibly worthy of consideration again. Um, just because although it's unwanted, it is nevertheless a part of our um, kind of ceramic landscape. It exists entangled in our lives. Um, so I suppose that's the fascination is that once upon a time there were things that were wanted um, and desired and now they're completely rejected and um, you know just, just worthless as well. So the ones that I've got here, the ready-mades that I have here um, are sort of doubly rejected because they're all cracked and broken oh, or they've got signs of repairs on them as well. So it's about, about taking them and kind of 
as I say, putting it through that kind of process of transformation mm -hmm. um, and changing it through um, either altering its shape or changing the material um, or also um, through making it gigantic and making it miniature. Um, so whether it's in ceramic or um, it's in uh, plastic resin or it's with 3D printing, mm -hmm. it's, everything has kind of been been altered to do with the figurine. Nice. And that's, that's a new process of 3D printing then to integrate that in ceramic. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, do you have any pieces that you've ceramic 3D printed? Is it the PLA that you've used? Or? It's PLA that I've used. Yeah. Um, what I've done is the original, um, the very first kind of uh, figurines were made in porcelain and it was just when porcelain had been invented mm -hmm. in the early 18th century. Um, and so the makers at the time were really excited by the possibilities of what they could do with the new material. So instead of an echo of that, the latest material these days is obviously um, PLA and 3D printing. So yeah. it's to kind of just to, to bring those two things together. Um, so, so that's it. But I haven't. I would love to um, cast them again, um, put them into silicone rubber, and maybe recast them into another another material. I'm not sure about casting them in plaster. Yeah. <laughs> might, be, might have a, yeah, a many parted mould. <laughs> so um, yeah. And where have you sourced all of your? Are you just really enthusiastic about um, all these figurines? Then is that yeah. just from? Is that your inspiration then? I mean, it's really from doing the degree, from being interested in clay and the figure, and then just you automatically the thing you see um, are uh, figurines, yeah. um, and then you come across you know, the fact that they're just completely non-art objects and not wanted. Um, so I, I started collecting them um, and did other things with them before, sort of smashed them up and put them in resin. Um, and um, I, at that stage, I, I really just wanted to kind of to damage them almost, damage them and preserve them as well. But this time I think it's more about having a bit of um, respect for the the figurine itself for the making process for the style and the form of it um, so yeah great thank you and so what about what does the future hold for, for um, yourself well i've applied for the mfa so hopefully um i'll be doing that and that's in australia <laughs> that's yeah. that's here yeah so that's that's the next two years and then possibly hopefully um a phd after that so i'm Good. kind of i really want to push the material and go down this sort of research fantastic route, dedicated I think. Then, yeah, yeah no i mean especially that's, the material and the process well absolutely i mean that's, that's you can the, see what? well the latest ones the, the kind of the order that they were done the the hand-built ones were made first then the 3d printed ones and then the parian and almost the parian has really become the thing that I'm definitely interested in because of what it does, you know, what you can do with it in the kiln and sort of there's that potential for exploration. It, you know, one piece that is carved over went into the kiln straight and obviously in the process in the kiln it's melted and um, bent a bit. Um, so I suppose it's about playing more around more with that because um, I've always been focused on the, the kind of structural, sculptural thing and not particularly being that interested in the firing process mm -hmm. it's just a means to an end but now i'm thinking the firing process is something that is another yeah. avenue for exploration so definitely gosh yeah. there's so much to learn in ceramics so isn't there it's endless it is endless, endless absolutely no <laughs> so how did your degree show go then i see that you sold actually a few pieces yeah which is great. no absolutely um the university um bought um a one of the Parian assemblages for their collection, um, and um, well done. yeah, and um, a few people have bought the dissected ones, the kind of um, ones that are sliced and dissected. Um, so they've been bought, and then um, a head, one of the large kind of heads has been bought as well. So Brilliant. it was Fantastic. very good, yeah. very and good. the um, Royal Ulster Academy have um, invited um, a display of the little dissected and sliced ones as well for that's the exhibition. Great. So oh, for this year and yeah, uh -huh. then uh, through January, that's Yes, uh -huh. yeah, so oh, no, that's good. good. So all of that is kind of hopefully little indicators that you're going in the right yeah, direction. This, yeah. yeah, it's something maybe <laughs> interesting. Right. Yeah, definitely. It, so. Brilliant. So how can people find you then um, if they want to find out more information about you or to watch your journey as you're going towards this? Um, well, um, through web, my website, I suppose. Yeah, it's uh, lisaallen.art um, and Instagram as well. Brilliant. And what's, yeah. what's your handle on Instagram? Um, it's Lisa Allen Art. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Really great. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you very much. much. I'm speaking with the wonderful Cara Matten. 
Can you tell us a wee bit about yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Cara Mahan and I am a recent graduate in silversmithing and jewellery. Brilliant. And can you tell us a wee bit a visual description of your work? Um, so my work is about destruction and recreation. And I work a lot with natural forms, like a lot of wood, a lot of found stones. And then I also pair it with um, polyurethane and plastics and resins and stuff. Brilliant. And can you tell us a wee bit about your making practices? I basically just have a whole lot of fun. I'm burning wood to see how it burns, I'm scorching it, I'm using clear lacquer, I'm using different woods to see how they burn and seeing how different resin sets. Like I'm always just experimenting and having fun really. Like that's basically all I do is just have fun all the time. Excellent, that's what making's all about, isn't it? Um, and can you tell us a wee bit about the inspiration behind your work? Um, it kind of came from, do you know when you go when you're a kid and you go to the beach and you pick up loads of stones yeah. and you take them home and they just sit in your dresser? I just kind of never grew out of that, so okay. um, I found a way to kind of still be quite childlike and then also playing with stuff and then also making a contemporary jewellery and making it fit together. Okay. So I have a load of fine stones and I just kind of leave them as they are, like I don't do a whole lot of them, I don't cut them really, I just kind of power them with things that I think, you know, they'll be nice against. So do you feel you're kind of curating the work? Yeah, and uh, I've been definitely been told like that my pieces are like mini sculptures or mini paintings. Yeah, you definitely, I definitely think that. about like um, like quite a lot of them are in frames and very much like aesthetics. Like, I think about how they look a lot. Like I'm very into like the composition of them and stuff and making sure they're just how I want to. And like throughout the year, I've learned like you know just a wee bit of color or like one wee bit of silver, like something different can just like really change it, and then that'll be it completed. Yeah. So how did you make this uh, final selection for mm -hmm. what? Like, had you experimented with many more, and then this is what you pared it down to, or were these all very individually considered before you made them? They were quite individually considered. There was a couple that I didn't display, um, and I debated them but I didn't have a huge quantity of work I never really work in like huge quantities and level it down I mm -hmm. kind of have small things and make sure they're right and how I want them yeah. and perfect and then move on to the next one That's so would you um, get them to a certain point and then leave them and then come back or is it that you will like go into the studio and in one day you'll kind of whip a magical piece together and that's you done and you move on or is it kind of yeah quite a lot of them were done you know I'd stick to one thing and do it and then quite a lot of them had a load of problems and stuff so I had to leave them and come back to them and keep working with them there was a piece I had to make 15 times which was over the course of four weeks so I had to work on stuff as well or else I'd never have any work done yeah but yeah fantastic and what about um so your exhibition or your body of work is called carbon yes is there what's the idea behind that um it's basically because uh charcoal is carbon is, and everything yes. <laughs> burns down to carbon so like the burnt wood and stuff and then it was also the work's called carbon because it's about breaking down a lot of wood and burning it and then that comes into carbon and it also works with the idea that i'm using lots of natural things as well because yeah. most of the things in my work are natural like the silver you know natural the wood and the fine stones and the glass even it's just the polyurethane the resin that will be quite the like the human recreation part of it and what them um, so your aesthetic is quite continuous and it's really beautiful how you've um, edited them and put them together and there is even though they're so different there is um, quite a consistency across the board mm -hmm. you've got quite a shocking orange is there a particular reason for that if there's not that's totally fine they're started like that started off I just very much look at something and I'm like this needs something what does it need yeah and I'll just go through colors in my head and I found orange I was like orange is the one and then I started researching what the color orange meant and it had nothing to do with it and okay. it just ended up I was like I was like no none of, none, none of this is working it totally was just an aesthetic choice to put orange in them Brilliant. and then because I was like well if I do one of them orange I'll just have a running theme of orange so everything is orange and it's not my favorite color <laughs> good and um so how did you feel the year went for you I thought the year was really well. I definitely amped it up in third year and I worked super consistently. Brilliant. I was in Monday to Friday, like 10 to 5, 10 to 6 every day. Which wasn't a regular Which thing. Which is not a regular before. thing. Yeah. No. So I definitely <laughs> put my socks up this year. Excellent. But, yeah. Well, I definitely think it paid off. It looks amazing. How did you find the degree show went? I love the degree show. Yeah. I always love the degree show. And it was really different at being your own degree show. So it was really interesting talking to people and they were interested in your work and wanted to know more, which is something that you always think 
you know, oh, no one cares about my work. Yeah. Like, I'm just standing here. And when people were asking questions, I was like, oh, people are actually interested in my stuff. Yeah. So that was really nice to hear Good. as well. I'm sure yes. it was rewarding after your consistent year of consistent. making. <laughs> um, and then, so what is the future for Carmen? So, um, I got an apprenticeship in a local jewellers. Yeah. So I'm there part time. Fantastic. So I've already started on that, which is brilliant. And I basically want to do that to really amp up like my technical skills. Yeah. I feel like I still have a lot to learn. Like I've learned a lot here, but I still feel like I have a whole lot to learn. And I think an apprenticeship is probably the best route for me yeah. to learn as much as I could. It's very immersive. Yeah. Yeah. And just, I do want to go into traditional jewellery making as well, which okay. selling out to corporate, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quite a change from what you've done it is, previously. It's, it is very and is different. that like for financial reasons or is that because that's where your heart lies or is there any I don't know. See, that? see I, I've said for the past year, I was like, oh, I want to go into traditional jewellery. And while I do love contemporary jewellery, mm -hmm. I feel like I want to get the basics of traditional jewellery down so I have like a knowledge behind me yeah. and then who knows in a couple of years maybe I could be going back to contemporary jewellery. Yeah. I just feel like I need to know a lot more. No, I totally agree. I think it's the right thing to do. Like I think there's a lot of people leave um, with total respect to everyone who's involved in the teaching process. But I think, you know, there's only so much you can learn in three years and it is quite crammed and quite um, fast paced. So definitely to go back and look at your skill and improve it is a fantastic thing yeah. for you to do. Um, and so then after you do your apprenticeship or as well as doing your apprenticeship, are you hoping to do anything else? Are you hoping to be product in the future or? I'm not sure yet. I mean, I don't think anyone's sure as soon as they graduate, you know, I think I could just be traditional jewellery forever who knows amazing i think i will come back to contemporary at one point i think it's beautiful work so i think it would be a shame if you didn't but yeah. my a little flame will burn forever in my heart <laughs> that you come back to contemporary jewelry um but no it looks i didn't even realize your jewelry card or your business cards are like a beautiful black business card with a little orange line through it oh i'm minimal match, delicious the website matches too Speaking of websites, where can people find you and your jewellery and get in contact with you and totally fangirl over your work? It's Karamahan Jewellery on Instagram and then my website is just karamahan.co.uk. Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. And yeah, good luck with everything. Thank you. Hello. So if you could just introduce yourself. I'm David Samuel. Uh, I'm a third year degree student uh, doing ceramics now at I University graduate. of Ulster. And now I graduate, yes. Uh, I won the Degan Hart Award yesterday as well. Um, Amazing, well done. So That's fantastic. Uh, big, big achievement. Yeah, so absolutely. Happy. No, brilliant. So if you could just um, describe your work. Um, you've got uh, five uh, heads here. Are they yes. portraits? They are self busts. Portraits? They are self-portraits. They start out as 3D scans. Uh, okay. of my head and shoulders and then they get turned into a 3D print. Um, so the, the one in the middle there which is blank, it's just my head and shoulders, It uh, is the 3D print had to be sliced at the neck and between the shoulders so that I could print it three parts because right. the printer's not big enough yeah. to print them as one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all of the little models and figures on the surface of the heads are toys from my childhood that I have rescued from the loft wow. that my mother made me keep <laughs> uh, to pass on to my kids whenever That's I have them. Great, yeah. uh, so they're all like little molds that are then it's essentially it's a ceramic collage. Yeah. There you go. Great. Uh, and so then the inspiration term. behind making these pieces then? What's, uh, uh, what's it started of? off, uh, it started, honestly it started off as a, a tutorial with my tutor uh, where he suggested I looked at the trauma of losing my mum okay. uh, and the idea of that traumatic memory and I didn't want to relive that moment for, because it's still very close, it was only a few years ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. So I didn't want to relive that every day for a year i thought no it's gonna to be too much can be too hard i'm still not 100 percent okay with it yeah you know, like i'll ever be but that sort of started me down the line of thinking about memory and uh what my earliest memories were and they were playing with my toys so then i sort of i had previously looked at the idea of identity and the two kind of merged and the thing we identify with people the most is usually their face, it's how we recognise somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've kind of taken that idea of memory and identity and 
turned it into one thing and pop culture got mixed in there somewhere too and yeah. how we identify with others. So Absolutely. Identity is a big thing, I, I don't know why. No, they're fantastic. I mean, they definitely have a different process often. Could you talk about that a wee bit more? So you, you spoke about um, 3D printing then. Yes. Um, these are ceramic. Uh, yes. Did you 3D print with ceramic or with No, I plastic? had looked into 3D printing with ceramic, but uh, the facilities aren't yet available here. There's, uh, there's a 3D printer in the building for ceramic, but it's not yet functional. Okay. Uh, needs a wee bit of work, needs a wee bit of TLC to get there, but uh, otherwise it's just plastic, it's PLA, it's a, it's a hard compound, so it, it, you can do quite a lot with it, it's fairly versatile, um, mm -hmm. but I took a, a cast of the 3D print wow. to make these. Okay, so are they slip cast then? No, they're no? press moulded. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. And um, so have you applied each of the little toy pieces are they like sprigs then yes each, yeah each they're little, they're, I've, i made the sprigs out of uh bisque clay right so that i could continue to reuse them without any like risk of breakdown yeah um i'll probably need to redo the bust again at some stage uh but it was it was a fairly easy process as well it was just hand building plaster mold yeah. As opposed to a poured plaster mold because it would have used too much plaster and there would have been a lot of wastage. Yeah. No, well definitely. Um, and then there's, um, is that an oxide you've rubbed onto the surface? It's a uh, black nano stain. Mm -hmm. okay. um, with, on some of them there's a white underglaze. On the two on the end it's a porcelain slip with a, an oxide and a black stain. And so then what's next? What's what's um, the future holding then? For I have residents? applied for the artist in residency program here in uh, University of Ulster because I want to keep making and I want to I want to develop my work into some sort of product that I can make bread and butter money off yeah. so to speak so that I can continue to make <laughs> and continue to make the sculptural work that I want to make as well yeah. uh, but I eventually want to live off my work and just make and that's it. Like, I don't want to have to work in an office or in a job I don't want to do or in a garage somewhere just making these <laughs> scraps of money. I want to just want to make it. It's what I enjoy. It's what I love doing. So. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing your work. Um, it is really beautiful and it's a very emotive subject as well. I'm sure it was, yeah, um, hopefully a cathartic process to, to work through. Yeah. I just felt like I was reliving my childhood playing with all my toys again. Yeah. Uh, me and one of the second years had so much fun just unboxing the toys and just nerding out over them. Wow, like it was yeah. great. It oh, was great. Was great. Yeah, really? We got our geek on quite a lot. It was really fun. He brought some <laughs> of his toys in and yeah. Yeah. We just Brilliant. were children again. It was lovely. That sounds great actually. Yeah. I think exactly uh, what a great way to think. finish three years at the uh, studying. It's just yeah. playing. Oh, great. And so how did the degree show go for you? Degree show was uh, successful. Yeah. Uh, it, I sold two pieces to collectors. Right. Uh, one of which was basically selling the other piece for the other collector. I was just handed a phone and told here, talk to this person. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I had to direct them to my website while I was on the phone and kind of sell myself there. It was a wee bit different. I'm not used to that kind of experience, but yeah, yeah no, it was it was buzzing. The atmosphere was brilliant, and like every it seemed to had the impact I wanted it to. I wanted people to be drawn into the work and find stuff they recognise and just seeing people smile. Just yeah, it was great. Great. Okay, and so if people want to watch your journey or find you online, how can they do that? Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Right. And my handle is David Samuel Ceramics. David Samuel. Uh, yeah. Great. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you. So I am with the amazing Megan, uh, who is an, a brilliant ceramicist. I've just bought one of her pieces, and I'm just about to buy another one of her oh, pieces. Yes, so if you could you tell me much. a wee bit about your work. Um, I think that my work especially this year has a very illustrative style um, before I got into ceramics I was I mean I've always been someone who likes to doodle and draw so I think I was a little bit of an illustrator first and then it kind of took me until this year to realize how good of a canvas ceramics actually are yeah. for illustration um, so that's yeah that's what I've been making this year brilliant and how would you describe your stuff so obviously this podcast how would you describe your stuff um, visually to the listeners at home. Okay, so I definitely think there's a little bit of a like southwestern American vibe going on, especially with the colors. Um, 
you know, kind of like the tans, the terracottas and the pinks and stuff. Um, and then there's just very basic illustration um, and it's covered with faces. That was, I wanted to get as many faces on it as I could. So they're in the handle, they're they're all over the place. I feel you've definitely managed to <laughs> yeah. master the faces. Yeah, there's a lot of them. The many there. faces of ceramics. Yes. Um, and so who would you, what would be your inspiration behind your work and how did you, what's your making process behind it? Um, the inspiration this year, I think was a lot of just like looking back at makers who came before me and I noticed that there's kind of there's faces on the oldest pottery in the world um, and it's definitely something a style that has continued now like no matter what the culture is or um, what the piece is so I was looking at you know getting that into my work I guess um, and for the making process I am a hand builder I'm awful on the wheel unfortunately so um, but I think you have a lot more control over uh, form when yeah. you're hand building which is good brilliant and so is functionality these are um, so just for people who haven't seen images these are sort of beautiful jugs and vases would you describe them as yeah vessels? yeah I mean I would say they are vessels um, two of them anyway are pouring jugs I don't anticipate people will actually use them I don't know. I'm pretty enthusiastic. <laughs> I mean, it. yeah. I mean, maybe like at they a dinner party or something. Morning. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah. I anticipate that they'll just be used as a vase. So they are all functional. Yeah. Brilliant. Fantastic. And then, so, um, what would? Sorry, I forgot to say your full name. This is Megan Klingman. Yes, Megan Klingman. Um, and I'm sensing a bit of an accent. Are you a local Northern Irish person? I am not. Although I've been here for nine years, so I'm really? starting to yeah. starting to feel like a local. Yeah. But I'm not. Uh, I'm from Seattle, Washington. Amazing. Yeah, so, so what brought you over to Northern Ireland uh, to do this course? Family. My mom's from here, so oh. that's why I originally moved here just to get to know her family better. And then I stayed, and then. Somehow this, I actually took a night course, a ceramics night course. That's Amazing. how it all happened. Yeah, I was just bored and I was like, I have nothing to do on a Tuesday night. I'll take a <laughs> ceramics course. And then I fell in love with it. So, oh, yeah. that's so good. Yeah. Um, and so what does the future hold for oh the wonderful gosh. Megan Klingman? Um, you know what? I don't know. I know I just want to keep making. That's all. That's all I know. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet <laughs> or what I'm going to have to do to make it work. But I just know that that is what I would like to do. Fantastic. Um, yeah. And so for the summer, what's your kind of next steps? What's your, you were saying you want to clean out your yes. studio? and mm -hmm. I have a shed in my back garden that's full of um, cells and spiders. So I'm going to clear that out and then get making. So that's Brilliant. the goal. Yeah. And then um, how can people find you? your work yes they can find me on instagram at megan made this or my website is meganklingman.com perfect and any advice for either new graduates or people who are sort of struggling artistically to kind of push through barriers or anything that kind of got you through this challenging yeah i experience? think i think don't don't forget that you are making you need to make something that you love even if you have a prompt or you feel like you know you're working to a brief make sure that you love what you're making because it, it'll be a lot easier to get through the year Fantastic. thank yeah. you so much for thank you chat with us. yep thank you love your work and good luck with everything else thanks so much thank you bye bye hello okay so, hi i'm patricia mccauley um i'm a i'm a ceramicist i've just graduated <laughs> um my work's about memory and reminiscence so it's basically about taking a memory and encapsulating it so it's frozen in time making something tangible so they're text they were originally textile pieces some of them were handmade and some of them were vintage dolls clothes so like cindy and action men barbie and recent action men were too synthetic to dip so they're just dipped in a porcelain slip with 10% molochide added just to give more durability to them and be able to like manipulate the clothes slightly more because without that they just crumbled um they're encased in a polylite resin just like quite translucent just to make them look like glass i did want to use glass but i don't have the expertise yet and i didn't have the time to learn the expertise so it's something for the future brilliant very good um they are really um emotive they, they've kind of got that um, ghostly approach to them yeah. you know you've captured something in resin could you talk about the inspiration um, um, about the pieces 
I kind of wanted them to make, I kind of wanted to make them look like there was someone kind of wearing the, the clothes so like when I think of a person, like when I think of someone in my family, I think of like their clothes, like my dad is like a squirt, like a check shirt, mm -hmm. when I think of my dad I think of his check shirt, so it's just kind of the idea that like for a memory it's someone, like it's about a person but it's someone wearing that item of clothing so I wanted it to be quite kind of fluid and kind of look like there was someone in the clothes. Just, um, I did originally start out with a completely different direction originally. Okay. I had based my work on eating disorders, I had anorexia for six years so it was based on that. Okay. And they were supposed to be life size kind of dresses stitched together with fragments of paper clay, mm -hmm. with glass and different things and decals and words but it was too difficult a topic so okay. I changed halfway through semester two mm -hmm. to this. So it's just something memory and clothes just to kind of keep with that. Yeah. But I think this is more successful and it was a lot easier topic to do than the previous topic. Yeah. So. Okay. And how was the degree show? That was yesterday. So the degree show was brilliant. Fresh. Like it was really it was a really good experience. I think it was just nice to we only ever did one exhibition before and it was the Junkern Art Centre. Yeah. That was last year, so it was quite nice to kind of I don't know, it was scary, but it was just quite nice to kind of have that experience again. And it was more professional last night than our previous exhibition. It was really nice. Slightly overwhelming at times, but yeah. I think we all kind of realised how much we know about our work and how confident we can be, whereas yeah. before I think we were all panicking about that. Yeah. So it was just a really good experience. Brilliant. And you have sold a few pieces as well? Yeah, I've sold three, so I have nine pieces and I've sold three so far. Brilliant. So. Very good. So what is the future then? Um, what, what are you, what's the plans? What's, what's happening? Um, I want to learn more about glass, so <laughs> hopefully a uh, placement with Alison Lowry to learn more about glass and then I'm doing a course with Princess Trust this summer. Fantastic. And working with Invest and I, so hopefully be able to draw the business plan and stuff and continue making ceramics. And I want to do more textile stuff as well, so yeah. just kind of a mixture of just making. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And where can we find uh, your details and websites? And um, my website is patriciamacaulyceramics.com and social media is Patricia Macaulay Ceramics. And my email address is patriciamacaulyceramics at yahoo.com. Brilliant. Thank you so much. That's great. Your work is absolutely brilliant. We wish you all the best. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. So I'm with the very dapper looking Thomas. Could you just introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Thomas Horner and uh, I'm a functional potter. Fantastic. And um, you've made an amazing, quite a lot of uh, work for your degree show. How did you find the degree show went? Uh, the degree show was quite busy. It was quite a positive uh, reaction from most of the members of the public. Um, it's very warm because <laughs> there's no windows in this place, but uh, we get on with it, don't we? Uh, I fairly enjoyed it. Uh, there was a lot of interest in the plates and uh, the start of my journey from incorporating ceramics and circus together. So I, I'm a functional potter and uh, I've thrown about 100 and 150 plates and decorate. As part of your degree show? Yeah, as part of my wow. degree show, yeah. I have uh, also mugs and bowls that are on my website, but uh, this is just the degree show. Fantastic, and I see a lot of red dots. Yeah, well, 16 at the minute, but. Very nice, and was that from degree show night, or yes. is this after? Uh, some on the Friday, some Saturday, and some today, so. Fantastic, so could you actually, um, visually describe because obviously this is a podcast so we can't necessarily put images with it or else that'd be video because you visually describe um the items that you've made and also um your making process okay so uh i have stoneware plates that are thrown with one kilogram of clay and then when they're leather hard they're turned and then uh so they're the plates are all relatively uniform i haven't used the pointer and then uh they're tightly thrown with slipwear decoration which is quite loose and free and it's all about learning through play and having a bit of fun with it and some of the plates also have some markings that come from juggling patterns so I've dipped some juggling balls into clay or into slip and uh, tried out some different patterns in the air and how they dropped on the plates or how they move from one plate to the other. Fantastic and what about um, your inspiration for your degree? For you know, for your last few years, has it been quite consistent, or Ooh. is this new for your third year? Uh, no, I think it's been quite consistent. I have a little bit of influence after taking my Erasmus year in Latvia and Denmark, which Amazing. was the best year of my life. Yeah, uh, no so, that feeling. <laughs> so foundation first year, second year, Erasmus year, and now third year. So that's a long five years, but it was definitely worth it in the end. 
Brilliant. And um, speaking of your Erasmus year, I went on Erasmus myself, so I'm very interested in how this changes people and makers. But um, what do you think you gained from doing it? I gained a lot from Erasmus. Um, I have contacts from all over the world now. And uh, as I said, it was the best year of my life. I can go and visit these people again. Yeah. And uh, I've widened my prospects. Technically, I've learnt Raku and a fire firing and with a different university it's a whole different technique of teaching, very traditional teaching with other courses. I even dipped my hand into some life drawing and glass and a little bit of model making as well. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't recommend a gap year high enough. It was a wee bit challenging coming back. I felt a wee bit like a caged animal coming yeah. from like freedom back into a, an institution. But I got through it in the end, so. Fantastic. And do you think visually um, your work has changed as a result of that? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Brilliant. What were you making beforehand? Uh, beforehand, I was still making functional work, but it gave me the, the year, essentially, gave me my own freedom to work out a few kinks of my own before coming back and having fully like a full focus on third year. Yeah. Um, and so how did you find that third year? And obviously if you're coming back and the changes that sort of adapting um, to a new working environment, maybe more in pressured environment, that does change it. But um, you've got, you said you've got juggling balls and stuff. Is that the kind of things that you were interested in beforehand? Or? Oh yeah, I've always been interested in circus. Circus is a big part of my life. And it only seemed natural to incorporate ceramics and circus together eventually so this is the start of the journey and i think i will continue with this and i'm happy enough to see well i'm excited to see where it goes brilliant and what is sort of lined up for the future what have you got already uh, lined up and what would you aspire to do well, in five years time kind of situation oh, wow well, uh, i know i didn't give you these questions before I oh, uh, that's okay uh, <laughs> no it's, it's always good to have a plan but life isn't always set in stone so Very true. um i'm gonna work for a year Brilliant. I've got my own wheel at home, I've got my own kiln, so I'm going to still make, but it'd be nice to have a bit of money for a change. Yeah. Are you going to work within uh, something to do with your discipline or crafts uh, or I'm, something completely different? I will try and work with my d discipline, but I'm going to take a break from ceramics just briefly because it's always good to step back, otherwise you're like a horse with blinkers on and you get yeah. too uh, involved with it. But I'm going to work for a year and then uh, go down to Kilkenny, hopefully, Amazing. in the two-year course, intensive for one. Fantastic. That's where I think my skills lie. Brilliant. So you're hoping to maybe become more product oh, in, yes, in the future rather than exhibition work? Definitely, yeah. yes. Yeah, brilliant. And so where can people find you? They can find me on details? Facebook, uh, Thomas Warner Ceramics, and then my website, you can go through there, which is thomaswarnerceramics.co.uk. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a lot of self-publicizing here. That's all right. And That's then what it's about. Instagram, T Horner 484 Fantastic. And so would you have any advice to... Um, any other people going through the same process or coming into third year or school or just to any other makers maybe need a bit of advice? Uh, uh, I would have a bit of advice for people that are at university and they're mm -hmm. thinking about taking a gap year, just do it. Yeah. Save up a bit of money and do it. Keep on top right. of the paperwork, but it's, you're going to reap more benefits than you're going to expect. Fantastic. That is brilliant. Thank you so much for interviewing with us and the work looks amazing. I'm so glad to see so many red dots and may there be many more. Thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you to the students for letting us interview them, or sorry, the now graduates. Thank you to all the staff, the lecturers, the, um, the University of Ulster, or sorry, the Ulster University staff that made it all possible to put the show together. Uh, we wish you good luck in everything that you do to all the students. Um, if you're interested in hearing any more of the Making Conversation podcasts, please keep your ears peeled. We'll be doing our official launch um, with our first interview is with uh, Maria McCormick, the amazing textile artist. And that will be launching in for August um, Craft Month, which will be happening this year. So for any more information, if you want to go to our website, it's www.makingconversationspodcast.com. And um, our Instagram and Twitter will be uh, letting you know. Um, so if you want to follow us, we'll keep you updated with what's happening next. But thank you so much from Gemma and myself. We really appreciate it.